So in this tutorial, we're going to explore different ways to mix visuals together just using Nistrop. So just to explain the most basic, uh, a simple crossfade, which is super useful, but to crossfade between two different deck visuals, we can do that with the default setup. So we can left click on a preset and I'll send it to deck one, and then we can right click on a preset to send it to deck two. Those are the default. Um, that's the way it's set up by default. Um, so to have the deck two visuals be overlaid into deck one, uh, over here I've made a I put the spout sprite right here. I put it into a queue, deck two, uh, just for easy access. So if I left click on that, now the visuals are from deck two are overlaid and visible in deck one. The deck one visuals are still being rendered behind it, but now if we change the spout sprite alpha for deck two, now you can do a simple crossfade between the two, which is super, super useful for queuing up visuals or if you want to see both visuals at once. So it's also useful about it is that this slider can be mapped to a MIDI controller, so you can uh, apply it to a MIDI knob and then do a crossfade just from a MIDI knob. So to use Nestrop for more complex ways of mixing the visuals together, uh, you really need to have a basic understanding of what a sprite is and what it's capable of doing. So to do that, let's first disable that spout sprite. We're going to go to the bottom to the image sprites area because they're very similar in how they function to the spout sprites and explore how they work. So first, uh, I don't know, let's just enable this space shuttle. And here you can see it's spinning. So the default sprite effects for the image sprites is different. They have different effects than the spout sprites. We'll explore that in a second. But what the effects allow is for you to apply animation, such as position, scale, rotation, or transparency. You can animate those values according to how the effects code is written. It also allows you to change the screen mode. So if you've used After Effects or Photoshop, then you know what blend modes are. And then also whether burn-in is enabled. So something I should say about these effects is they can be applied really easily by if you hover over a button, you hold Control, and then middle mouse scroll wheel, you can apply effects. You can do that while they're active and then see them visualize like that. Um, something important though is that the image sprites and the spout sprites have their own set their own set of effects each in unique and individual and we'll explore that in a little bit. I'll show you where the code is and you can edit it yourself. But as an example of the different animation effects, uh, blend mode effects, and the burn-in, uh, so here is one with blend mode 3. So blend mode 3 is a screen effect, just like in Photoshop After Effects. So anything that's black, you can see through the astronaut's helmet. Uh, anything that's black is made transparent. Anything that's white is made opaque. Um, and I, the burn-in is enabled, so you can see how as the astronaut is spinning, the visuals behind it the drawing process is affected within the engine. But if we go to a sprite that has effects number one on it, see here, there is no, um, the drawing, the burn-in is off. So the visuals behind it in the, drawing, in the engine are not being affected. So burn mode on, you can see it being affected, burn mode off. So that's kind of a critical aspect of these different effects numbers is they're all coded differently, and you can customize them however you want, but by default, we've set it up to be a certain way because we had to make some decisions. Um, so for the other blend mode, this is blend mode 4, so it uses the color key. Um, so it's subtracting out the pure black color, um, and the burn-in mode is enabled, and it's animating around, and then here's with the same, but with the burn mode disabled. So you can see the, the fire effect is not, the astronaut is not affecting the fire visuals in the background. Really hard to discuss this stuff. So 
Also, as you hover over a sprite button, you'll notice there's overlay or nested, and this is telling whether you want to literally overlay on top of the visuals or nest within the, within the engine drawing process. So it makes a pretty drastic difference, the effects that you set up and specifically the preset. With that understanding of, of what sprite effects enable, let's transition back over to the spout sprites. So we can actually just do it right here. So if we again enable it, we can control uh, the alpha for this. But if we now hold control and change the effects, one, now the burn mode on is enabled for deck two. So you can see it completely changes the possibilities of how the visuals interact according to whether the burn-in is enabled or disabled. And there's a bunch of different um, effects. So for instance, this one is, um, it is modulating the spout sprite alpha according to the music. So even though I can change what the threshold or the maximum value is capable of even reaching uh, within that modulation, the sprout sprite effects for three and four will still change the alpha. So I can make it zero and it's not gonna do anything or 100%. Um, and then there's some, like this one just rotates really slowly and you can change the alpha burn in is on there and off here so you just get a perfect uh, crossfade and then there's a there's just a bunch of them that we program so that one spins faster this one I think uses it spins while modulating the alpha according to the music which can give some really interesting kind of refreshes of the trolling process if the burn mode is on and, you know, it's just kind of like, uh, it's that it redoes the initial state. Changes the rotation according to the music, I think to the bass, like kind of like a speaker effect here. Anyhow, there's a whole bunch of different ones that you can use. Um, and what I should mention with this is that zero through 49 effects numbers here, those all use blend mode four. So if we go back to zero, you can see what I mean. Blend mode four um, is matte, and you can use the spout sprite alpha slider to change it to whatever you want. But due to how the spout sprite effects are coded, um, we can't use the alpha for blend mode three. So if we go to uh, 50, so 50 through 99, use blend mode 3. That's just how we coded it. And now you can see these visuals are overlaid here. So anything that's black is transparent, white is completely matte, and everything in between according to its, its value is overlaid. It makes it, um, it calculates the transparency. But the caveat of that is because it's being calculated on the fly by the engine, we don't have any control over the alpha. So that's why we made it secondary. It's not the first effects because it's kind of confusing that the slider doesn't work. So again, zero through 49 uses the blend mode four, the color key. Even though it doesn't actually color key, it's still just completely matte. That's a confusing aspect also, but it is what it is. Um, you know, we've kind of mutated the milk drop engine to suddenly use spout sprites. So even though it was made for color key, it doesn't do that anymore for the spout sprites. Whatever, you know, you can figure that out. And blend mode three is 50 through 99 uh, for screen right on top. So if we try some other effects, you can see it screened on top and it's burning in right now. So actually if I go back to the spouts, um, so 50 will burn in, but if I make it 51, it'll just overlay on top. So the visuals you can see 
aren't affecting the fire behind it, and 50 they are, which is a bit harder to see, but it's, it's an interesting subtlety that does make a, a big difference when you really get into it, because here you can see as these mandala kind of animates, it's affecting the visuals. There's this, you know, this stuff is really hard to talk about, but the more you play with it, the more you actually understand what's going on. So if you're really enjoying this process and uh, applying the effects numbers to things, um, then you can actually edit the effects yourself. So if we open up the nest drop folder and go into the plugins folder, then milk2 underscore spout ini, this is where all the spout code exists. So when I was talking about burn-in, you know, if you want to change that, you can just change the code directly. Um, I have included comments for each of the effects, but you can completely customize this code. You know, just because we wrote it this way, um, you can make it whatever you want in actuality. Um, at the bottom of this is also a bunch of documentation of what the different blend modes do and different variables and uh, even functions that do some pretty interesting math. So a really interesting possibility is that since NestDrop supports Spout not only for output, but it also supports it for input. So we could use Resolume to play back a video directly into NestDrop and have it affect the engine visuals, which could be really interesting. So the first step is, uh, assuming that you have Resolume already running, is to go to the output menu and make sure that you have Spout Output enabled. So in the latest version, it's called Texture Sharing Spout. So once you have that output, then over here in the Spout Sprite section of NestDrop, there is a composition Resolume Arena. So um, if we were to play back a video and then enable or well, activate this spout sprite, then we can see it playing back. Um, using overlay, since there's no alpha on this video, so we can't see any of the, vid the nest visuals behind it, but we could instead use the nested. So now it's actually playing back the video as part of the drawing process. Um, but if you did want to instead have the video overlay on top, then we could apply the auto mask, which is a, an effect built into Resolume. So if we drag this on, on top of it and change the contrast, then it creates um, an alpha channel for the video based on luminosity. So you tune that to whatever you think looks best. and there you see, it's it's involved in the milk drop visuals. And right now I think the burn is turned off, so if we turn burn on, then it'll affect, it's a part of the drawing process and it's overlaying just due to how that preset, that specific preset is designed. But if we try a different preset, let's see what it looks like. So there's all sorts of wild possibilities with this. Not only with overlay, but with nested. Um, and this way you can get, you know, like a dancer in the visuals, your own favorite video loops. But what is really fun is to use visuals which are highly reactive, you know, like any of the liquid ones. Um, with an alpha channel, really let things go wild because they're directly affecting the visuals, right? And and yet you're getting you're getting that interplay between your nicely crafted video and it's affecting the engine itself. It's just wild. So that's how you do that. Well, while we're in Resolume, another crazy possibility is that it supports webcams. So why not also bring in a webcam? So if we activate it, you can see me there. Now if we activate it in NestDrop, there I am in NestDrop now. Uh, now we just need to apply some 
effects. So why don't we start by uh, inverting it. Oops. And then let's apply an auto mask. Oh yeah. I'm inside Milka. Oh. Oh, get another preset. Ooh. These are some that I've picked out already that I thought would work well. If we change the contrast just enough, I can punch through. Pretty wild. So the sky's the limit for this stuff. You know, I mean, this is lame that I'm just in front of it right here, but you could easily have someone dancing live, or if you if you approach it in an interesting way, such as if we change off the inversion, then I'm only popping in occasionally. Oh. Cool. So an interesting possibility that's really unpredictable but can be fun to play with is that you can actually do a feedback loop within a single deck. So here we are looking at a preset and here we are using effects number 48 for deck 1 and I'm going to trigger it back into deck 1. So kind of important to understand what the effects numbers are doing. Uh, you, so here we are if we open up the spout eye and eye folder. Um, 48 is scale 75% rotate smoothly inc include burn effect. So it kind of make well it makes sense because you're seeing a nested version of itself continually repeated and it's spinning. Um, so if we go to 49, you can see the same effect, but the burn mode is not enabled. So it's just repeating the same visual, but the drawing process, process isn't being affected. Um, a similar one is 41. So 41, here, let's just see it. It will, it does the same thing, but it pulses the alpha, the transparency, on and off every 1.5 seconds, which adds for some really interesting effects. So if we try out this, then you can see it getting pulsed on every so often. So this is the tame version of how to use feedback loops within a certain deck. They can be really hard to control, um, specifically because the engine kind of can wipe out a lot of the time. Um, it can easily just freeze, so if we copy this deck, um, and then let's just make it effects number zero, the default one, and trigger it, um, but with a different visual. So often uh, the visuals will just completely freeze because it's literally looking the spout sprite for, z for zero, the default one, fit to screen area, no movement, no burn effect. So there's nothing, it captures the image, um, the spout sprite, and then it's continually feeding that over and over and over again. So if we change the spout sprite alpha, you can kind of tweak it to get, so if we turn off the effect, you can see that's what it normally looks like. Enabled, that's with the feedback loop because it's always capturing the pixels that are on frame and then feeding them back into itself so you can kind of get like a weird echo effect at least without any effects. Um, then if we go to effect one now the burn mode is now turned on right so fit to screen area no movement include burn effect so to actually see anything we have to change the sprite, sprite alpha for deck one to be like one percent or something super minimal and this is where deck visuals I mean, the preset that you choose is very important because um, this one's a lot darker, so we can get, we can change the sprite alpha to be quite higher to get some more interesting effects. But whatever preset you choose completely controls what's even possible.
um, for the feedback loop itself. Uh, so like, uh, what I really like to do when it comes to doing feedback loops is so the effects number two and three for the spout sprites will fit to the screen area, screen area, no movement, but modulate the alpha according to the treble. So let's just try number two. So there is music playing, we can't hear it, but it's only pulsing the alpha according to the music. So you can sometimes, according to the preset, get a feedback loop, but only when the music hits, which is really fun. Um, it's very difficult to control, honestly. Um, so beware, because it's a beast. So for instance, here's this preset by default. And then if we turn on with effects 2 to modulate the alpha as a feedback loop, now it's continually getting a pulse. That's really interesting. But if we do it as nested, 100%. Yeah. So it's, it's feeding off itself, making itself brighter. And if it gets too bright, you can always control spark alpha to tame it back down. You know, sometimes feedback loops can get out of control. That's what they're known for. So beware. It is alive when you do a feedback loop, but a lot of fun. All right, have fun.